Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. A kind of breezy, sunny day. We'll see what the weather brings. I went to Spain for a week and came back, and it was most definitely autumn in Scotland when I returned. And a big thank you to John Spooner from Neilston for leading worship last Sunday while I was away. Um, I'd just like, we've got someone new with us um, this morning that you're going to be seeing quite a lot of over the next six months or so. So, Katrona, would you like to come and smile and wave at people? <laughs> Katrona is from Kilmarnock and she is training for Ministry of Word and Sacrament. She's training initially, well, at this point, you're training as an ordained local minister. Ordained local ministers are usually um, allocated to charges by presbytery. So it's slightly different from full-time ministry word and sacrament, but the training is near enough the same, really. So it's called an autumn placement that Katrona is on. This is her first placement, but the autumn placement lasts until about May. <laughs> so Katrona will be with us for a good while in both churches here in Caldwell and in Dunlop. So you'll be seeing her round and about the parish and here on Sundays as well. We have a beautiful harvest display out at the front and we have wonderful harvest flowers here. That's a really beautiful display that we have in the chancel area. This afternoon is our messy harvest event which is taking place here in the grounds of the church, mostly outside if the weather holds and we'll be in the hall, I think, for some of the time, but hopefully mostly outside. So that's from two o'clock to four o'clock. So if you know of any families, any children, um, with families who need to bring an adult with them who would like to come along, then please let them know or give them a wee nudge. I think we already, we have a core group of about 18 families, I think, at the moment, who are invited along to all of our messy events. And the messy events have been going very well throughout the lockdowns, throughout COVID, to the extent that the messy church families have asked us about Sunday schools. So we're looking to have a Sunday school starting again in the new year to get that set up. So if that's something, again, that you feel you could help with or would like to be part of, then please get in touch either with me or with Lorraine. It's very important that we're able to encourage and provide a home for children and families here in the church. We gather here as God's people, and we begin with our call to worship and we speak together the words which are in bold. God of the harvest, gather, gather us in. in. God of the plentiful, gather, gather us in. in. God of the abundant, gather, gather us, us in. in. God of us all, gather, gather us in. And we begin our worship singing together. Come, you thankful people, come. Raise the song of harvest home.
We bring ourselves before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. God, you are more generous than the most loving parent. Yet we depend on the harvests of this and other lands and the labors of people of many nations. Make us grateful for what they do for us. Help us to trade in such a way that we may not exploit others and to share our plenty with those in need, that none may go hungry while your earth yields so abundantly. Father God, give to all who work the land here and all around the world wisdom to understand your laws and to cooperate with your wise ordering of the world and grant that the bountiful fruits of the earth may not be hoarded by the selfish or squandered by the foolish, but that all who work may share abundantly in the harvest of the soil. Forgive us, Lord, for thinking of ourselves more than others, for eating too much without considering those who have nothing at all, for our lack of diligence in searching for ways to share our riches with the hungry and the thirsty. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. Amen. And I invite Lynn now to come forward for our scripture reading. The reading is from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 44, contemporary English version. The apostles now returned to Jesus from their tour and told him all they had done and what they had said to the people they visited. Then Jesus suggested, let's get away from the crowds for a while and rest, for so many people were coming and going that they scarcely had time to eat. So they left by boat for a quieter spot, but many people saw them leaving and ran on ahead along the shore and met them as they landed. So the usual vast crowd was there as he stepped from the boat and he had pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he taught them many things they needed to know. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, tell the people to go away to the nearby villages and farms and buy themselves some food for there is nothing to eat here in this desolate spot and it's getting late. But Jesus said, you feed them. With what, they asked. It would take a fortune to buy food for all this crowd. How much food do we have, he asked. Go and find out. They came back to report that there were five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the crowd to sit down, and soon colourful groups of 50 or 100 each were sitting on the green grass. He took the five loaves and two fish and, looking up to heaven, gave thanks for the food. Breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave some of the bread and fish to each disciple to place before the people. And the crowd ate until they could hold no more. There were about 5,000 men there for that meal, and afterwards 12 basketfuls of scraps were picked up off the grass. Amen. Thank you, Lynn. Our harvest service is taking a week in a different shape from our usual services today. So we're going to be having three short reflections on different aspects of what Lynn just read in that very familiar story of the feeding of the 5,000 and thinking about harvest. Now, as you came into the church and throughout the week, I have seen foodstuffs and toiletries and different things gathering up in the porch which are going to be taken to Barhead Food Bank. And I had a quick rifle through, much to the dismay of the people on door duty when I arrived this morning, and I have picked out seven items from the goods which are going to the food bank. So not all food, because we give toiletries as well to people in need. So I'll shuffle them along a wee bit, and then I'll hold them up. 
and you can see. So they spell out a word. It's really easy to guess, but you'll probably know already what the word is going to be. So we have haggis, Alberto Balsam, shampoo, rough oat cakes, vegetable broth mix, eggs in an empty box, sunflower oil, and tea, which spells harvest. For farmers, there are memories of good harvests and bad harvests, and there's always hope for the next harvest. The farm I grew up in had a, the biggest field in the farm. It was called the Klondike Field. And I was told as a child it was called the Klondike Field because we once had a tremendous crop of potatoes from that field, just like the Klondike Gold Rush. That's how far back the good harvest was. Bad harvests, 1985, is a year that will strike horror in any farmer's heart because that was the year it just didn't stop raining. And lots of crops were never harvested that year. They just had to be ploughed back in, into the ground, into the soil, uh, with hope for the next year. So our sh three short reflections today are going to focus on these things, the good harvests, bad harvests, and hope for the next harvest. And there are three words which we can create from the word harvest, which shine a light on those aspects of harvest life for us all. And the first word I'm going to spell out, I'll need to shuffle things about, begins with sunflower oil, haggis, Alberto balsam, rough oat cakes, and the eggs, which spells share. I should have a countdown clock going. Sharing is about generous giving. Sometimes it's about sacrificial giving, especially just now. We're facing a cost of living crisis and some people are continuing to give to the food bank and they themselves are struggling. But we are called to be generous. We are called to give. We are called to work together for the benefit of all. In the verses that Lynn read, we hear that Jesus and the disciples were tired and they were hungry. They'd scarcely had time to eat because they were so busy with all the people that gathered round about them. And they actually had got into the boat and they had gone away to rest. But they were followed by this great crowd. And it's interesting that the crowd followed them and the crowd were on the shore to meet them when they arrived in the boat. But it was he who cared for the crowd. It was Jesus who stepped out of the boat onto the shore in amongst this vast crowd of people, and he saw them and had pity and compassion for them. Jesus recognized the needs of all these people as a crowd, as individuals within the crowd. And he saw them as sheep without a shepherd, people in need of his care and his attention. He saw their needs and he met their needs. He shared all that he had with those people. And at this time of year, as we gather for harvest services in churches all across the land and in primary schools and secondary schools and other organizations, foodstuffs and other toiletries and so on, other things are gathered and distributed to those in need. You see there, here are our contributions to the food bank. And as a congregation as well, we give nationally and internationally, most recently in our giving to the people of Pakistan as they try to recover from the devastating floods in that country. Jesus breaks down the borders 
and the boundaries. He breaks down all those things and fences and walls and habits and customs and traditions which serve to keep us apart from each other and make us inward looking, keen only to share with those who are like us. He looks out, he breaks down the barriers and he calls us to share with all. And in this feeding of the 5,000, we can be inspired by that breaking down of the barriers and remaking of a society in which all are made in the image of God and all are of value and deserving of compassion, love and care. We're going to bring our offering forward now. Our offering will be received and as always our offering is for the benefit of the church here in this place and also for the benefit of the church in the wider world. Let us pray. Giving God, we give you thanks and praise for all of your gifts to us. You have given us so much, and it is because we recognize the gifts you have showered upon us that we now give to the work of your kingdom. As we dedicate this offering, we offer ourselves to for these gifts of money are but tokens of ourselves. Take and use us, that our hands may reach out in service, our feet may walk the difficult path of reconciliation, and that our words may be words of peace. For all these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We continue in song now as we sing our next hymn, hymn number 226, God Whose Farm is All Creation. Thank you. 
some more spelling for you. Beginning with sunflower oil, <coughs> then tea bags, Alberto balsam, the rough oat cakes, the vegetable broth mix, and the eggs. Starve. We think of bad harvests. Bad harvests come in all shapes and forms and not always the most obvious. When I was in Spain last week, I went out and did a lot of walking. I was staying in a rural area in a wee valley where they grew olives and lemons, limes, tangerines, oranges, figs. And I noticed when I was out walking that in some of the small orchards, I think it was tangerines, there were small oranges which were still on the trees. They hadn't been harvested, but they had hardened and shriveled up. And there were loads of them on those trees. And they were lying in the ground under the trees, just going to waste. And I noticed other wee fields and orchards like that. So when I got back home that night, I googled, I looked it up. What's the problem? What's going on with the oranges in this part of Spain? And the problem that they're having in that part of Spain, or Spain as a whole, is that tariffs, international tariffs, have changed. So these small local farmers, orange farmers, are competing with imports, cheaper imports from South Africa. So we have situations in agriculture, in horticulture, in fisheries as well, where the food is there, the harvest is successful in that the fish are caught, the oranges are grown, the milk is retrieved, it's in the tank, it's all ready to go, but international markets create a bad harvest. And this is one of the things, I think, that we all struggle to comprehend, that we all struggle with, and we may feel powerless to do anything about. We're all aware that we live in a world where there is plenty on one hand and nothing on the other. We know that there are people literally starving in some parts of the world, where in other parts of the world there are public service campaigns to encourage us to stop throwing food away, to stop wasting food. And here you have situations where oranges are just shriveling up and hardening on the trees. They're there, but there's no point in harvesting them. It would cost more to harvest them than the farmer would get. We live in this international world where we are all connected one to the other. And we all have a responsibility to play our part as best we are able to ensure justice and fairness, particularly for those who are producing our food, who are involved in the transporting of food, who are involved in all the different aspects of getting food for our table, to our tables that they work together in a way which works for us all and feeds us all. Jesus had all these people gathered round about him. He was hungry, the disciples were hungry, the people were hungry. And the disciples came and they said, look, just tell these people to go away. Send them away, get them to go away, and they can get their own food somewhere else, and it has nothing to do with us. They recognized the problem, but they saw it as someone else's to solve, to find a solution for. We are called to be like Jesus, to see the problem, to know the problem, and to find and work to find solutions for the problem. To find out what it is that we already have, like the loaves and the fishes. Find out what we already have. 
and to work together to ensure fairness and equality of production and distribution so that no one need starve in any way. We gather now in our prayers for God's world and God's people. Let us pray. God, the beginning and end of all things, in your providence and care you watch unceasingly over all creation. We offer our prayers that in us and in all your people, your will may be done according to your wise and loving purpose in Christ our Lord. We pray for all through whom we receive sustenance and life, for farmers and agricultural workers, for packers, distributors and company boards, as you have so ordered our life that we depend upon each other, enable us by your grace to seek the well-being of all. We pray for all of those involved in research to safeguard crops against disease and to produce abundant life among those who hunger and whose lives are at risk. Prosper the work of their hands and the searching of their minds that their labor may be for the welfare of all. We pray for governments and aid agencies and those areas of the world where there is war, disaster, drought, and starvation. By the grace of your Spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty and make us wise stewards of your gifts. We pray for those who are ill, remembering those in hospital and nursing homes and all who are known to us. We pray for all who care for them. Give skill and understanding to all who work for their well-being. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfill your wise and loving purpose in us and in all for whom we pray, that with them and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed and the whole earth give praise to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing together now, all creatures great and small, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. Thinking of the vets. <laughs> Oh, 
good harvests, sharing bad harvests, starving, hope, hope for the next harvest. Sunflower seed oil, Alberto Balsam. Vegetable broth mix and the faithful eggs here for everything. Save. God saves. Jesus saves. Christ saves. We can think of harvest and we can think of food as meeting our physical needs of nourishment and also our spiritual needs of nourishment. And in so many stories in the Bible, we see God and God's people and Jesus bringing those together, where there is physical feeding and care and spiritual feeding and care. And we see that Jesus longs to gather people to him, longs to save people, longs to give them hope for the future. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks for the food. Breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave some of the bread and the fish to each disciple to place before the people. And the crowd ate until they could hold no more. And still there were 12 baskets of food left over. We hear this morning of a great picnic at which Jesus is the host. And as Mark's gospel proceeds, we're going to hear of another meal with fewer people present at a table. But Jesus there too will take food, will take bread, will take wine. He will give thanks. He will bless. He will break. He will offer. He will share. There were 5,000 men, we're told, at that great picnic. And there would have been women and children as well. A huge picnic vast crowd. We can't imagine all those people sitting together eating at one time. But how many people, I wonder, have joined Jesus and the disciples at that table, at the communion table, where we gather and we share the bread and the wine, where we remember his sacrifice, where we rejoice that he gave his all to save us. No one could possibly count the number of people that we have sat at that table with. And we sit at people, with people at that table in this huge cosmic mystery of time and space where we sit with Jesus, with the disciples, and with every Christian who has been called to that table, no matter when they lived or where they lived. It's impossible. What a great feast we are invited to by Jesus. What a wonderful harvest he offers us, a spiritual harvest of sharing, of invitation to action to ensure that no one needs starve, an invitation the acceptance of ensures that we are saved and that we recognize Jesus as our Savior. We gather as the family of God and we offer now together out loud the prayer of our family as we say together now, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We end with a very traditional and well-loved harvest hymn. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. As we go from this place to love and serve the Lord, may the blessing of God the Creator and Provider, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love today and every day.